Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can create a very simple fillable form for beginners. So let's just open a new document. So as you can see here it's just a normal A4 page and I've got my cursor here at the top. I'm just going to press the return key once so it gives me a little bit of space at the top and then I'm going to go to insert table and then here I'm going to go to insert table and number of columns I'm going to choose is one and number of rows I'm going to choose is 21 and then just click OK. Now you can see that my rows are quite narrow so I'm going to just click at the top left here on this square go to table layout and here you can see a height menu and you can adjust the height of your rows. You can do this by using these little up and down arrows. So just click on the up arrow and you can see as I do so, the table will expand and the rows will get thicker. So I'm just going to take that to one centimeter and deselect. And now you can see what you've ended up with. And with my cursor at the top here, I'm just going to move the table down two more spaces and then I'm going to select the table again. I'm going to go to table layout and over here you can select where your text will lie within your cell. So here if you want your text in the middle you select this one, over to the left and middle this one and so on and so forth. So for this I'm just going to select center left and then I'm going to go to table design I'm going to go to the borders. This area here is where you control all of the border lines around your table. So I'm going to select borders and then I'm going to select no borders and then I'm going to go to borders again and then I'm going to go all the way down to view grid lines. So this means that I'll have a guide but there's no actual grid lines on my table. I'm going to select the top row, go back up to table design go to borders and select outside borders and click. You can see now that I've got one border line around the, the cell here. Then I'm going to go to table layout, go to split cells. Automatically it comes up with two columns and one row. Select OK and you can see now that we've got this line in the middle. If you want to move this line, just hover over it you have to have the two cells either side of it selected. If I deselect this and try and hover over it, I can do so, but it will generally move any others you've got related to this line as well. So to select just this row, select it and then move it over like this. Then you can pop your text in and then once again you can move this line if you choose to do so. So then we're going to leave a space and then we're going to go to the next line. Now you could argue, why don't I just split all of these cells? But I find it's a lot easier to just do it individually rather than split all the cells in half because the lines, when you move the lines, it tends to move all of the lines at the same time. But you can do that if you want to. And if you want to do that, you just select all of the cells, go to table layout, go to split cells, again, two columns, 20 cells and click OK and you can see now that all of those have been split in half but if I then move this line it moves them all at the same time. If you want to do that that's absolutely fine but I'm going to show you how to do it individually. So miss out a row, click in this row here, go to table design. Now the outside borders you can see here is already selected so there's no need to go to the drop down again so just click then go to table layout split cells, OK. And once again, you can just grab this line and move it where you want it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this to all of the rows, but then I'm going to come back halfway down where we're going to do a slightly different arrangement to give you the options to put in tick boxes into this very simple form. Okay, so we've come to this cell here and we want to add some extra answers to this in the form of a tick box. 
So we've got marital status. So in here, I want to insert single or married and some check boxes. So the first thing I need to do is to split this cell into four. So place your cursor inside, go to split cells, increase the columns to four and select OK. Then we can just insert our text. And then with this cell, I want the text to move over to the right. So place your cursor inside, go up to table layout and go to this icon here, which moves it over to the right. And the same with this one, click inside and go over to the right. Then I'm going to insert the check boxes when we come to the end and insert all the fillable elements to allow you to turn this into digital form. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of the table. Okay, so now you've completed your form, you now need to create the elements that will allow your user to just click and fill in the elements you want and not change all the other bits and pieces you've put in. So you need to go to the developer tab. Now, if you don't have the developer tab, go to Word, go to preferences, Go to ribbon and toolbar over here on the ribbon and toolbar make sure you go down and check developer because these are all your tabs and then click save once you click save you'll find your developer tab up here just select it and then you've got all these elements here that you can insert into your form so we've got text box which is the most common so where you have your cursor and you want your first element that your user can fill in just go up and select text box. And as you can see, we've got this little gray box here. Now, once you protect your form, which you have to do before you save it and send it, what will happen is that if you go to click on first name, it will actually jump and click straight over to this gray box. So your user cannot change any of this or put any answers anywhere else other than in this box here. So I'm just going to unprotect the form. If you don't unprotect it, you can't edit it. So make sure it's unprotected and you'll see all of these light up again. If I protect it, they are grayed out. The only other thing with this one is that this allows your user to insert as many characters as they like on this form. Now, if you want to prevent that from happening, just select it and then right click, go down to properties and you'll have this menu box. Now you can see here it says maximum length and it's got unlimited. Now you can get, use the up arrow and you can see it says one, which only allows your user to place one character in that box. Now, if you want to allow them to use the whole box, what you'll have to do is you'll have to insert characters along this line so that you know how many you can actually place in the box. So let's say it's 25 characters. It's a bit more than that, but let's say it's 25 characters. Let's make sure you've got your text box in here. Then right click on it, go to properties. And in here, we want to put 25, the 25 characters. You'll have to go down to bookmark here and insert something, but don't put any spaces in it. So let's just say it's table text and then just click OK. And that now is limited to 25 characters. If you want the same for all of these elements, let's just say you've only taken the characters up to this point here, so they will fit in all of the other boxes. Then what you can do is click and drag over the top of this box, press Command or Control C on your keyboard to copy it, or of course you can go to the Home tab and select Copy, and go to the next one along and click Paste, Command or Control V, or let's go to the next one. You can simply go to paste. And then if you right click on these boxes and go to properties, you'll see that it's already changed it to 25 characters. So you don't have to go and do that over and over again. So let's just copy those into the relevant boxes very quickly. And then I'm just going to show you how to put in the check boxes. Okay. So here we would like a check box. So go back up to the developer tab and select check box and then go to this one here and select checkbox. Now, I don't like the way that they are placed. I want them in the middle of this cell. So place your cursor in the cell, go to table layout and select center align. Do the same with this one. 
and select center align and actually for this one I want to get rid of all of these little lines in between these elements so I'm going to select all of these cells I'm going to go to table design go to borders and I'm going to go down and deselect inside vertical borders and you can see now they're all gone but we have got our guidelines on so I'm going to go back up to borders and switch off the view grid lines and there you can see how our table will look now if you don't want these grey marks but you want to still have the text boxes there all you have to do is go back up to the developer tab and just click on shading and it will take that shading out but as you can see, the elements are still very much in place. So we're going to go up and do a title now, and then we're going to protect the form. So for the title, I like to go to insert, word art, click on the black one here. Let's just move this up to the middle. Click inside, command or control A will select everything. I'm just going to type in sample form. And then to quickly customize this, deselect it reselect the box then go to shape format over here on format pane and then go to text options now because i've used word art it does have a slight shadow on this text so if i go to this icon here click on shadow go to presets and select no shadow and now you can see that shadow has been taken off then go to the home tab i'm going to use the bold I'm going to increase my font size using increase font size and then go to shape format, align, align to center. And then I'm just going to select this word here and change the color, select it, go to the home tab, go to font color. I'm just going to change it to a top dark blue. That's completely optional. And finally, if you'd like a little footer at the bottom just to identify this form, or to put the page number in, double click at the bottom. You can see we've entered the headers and footers because you can see the tabs. Then just type out your text, double click back into the main body of the document and you can see it's grayed out which means it's in the headers and footers. That will mean this applies to every page that you create and just adds a little bit of professionalism to the form. So once you're finished with the form, don't forget to go back up to the developer tab, protect your form, which means I cannot edit this form at all now, but you can now send this to a client. As you can see, if I try to click anywhere, the cursor will land straight into those formatted boxes. If I want to check this box, I just click on it. You can see now it's got a cross in it. I can uncheck it by clicking on it once again. So now you can go ahead and save this as a Word document and send it on to a client. Or if you have Adobe, you can save this as a PDF. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.